Welcome to Global Business America. Coming up this hour, words of warning from the IMF as China embarks on its economic transition. Plus, in a State of the Union address, Mexico's president tries to put on a brave face, but his country faces big, big problems. And later, if you take a taxi in Venezuela, there is a good chance it could be a Chinese vehicle. But first, there are billions of dollars in deals on the table. Russia wants to develop its remote east, and it needs big investors. Leading the pack, China. Anya Aradeva reports from Moscow. Russia's first Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok aims to lure investors to the far east of Russia, the development of which has been declared a national priority goal. Russian officials say they want to offer preferential conditions to the participants of the forum. Some 200 projects with an investment volume worth $70 billion are to be presented at the event, from sectors including urban development and infrastructure, mining, timber industry, agriculture and transport. In order to develop uh, the Russian Far East, it's necessary not only to uh, depend upon our, our reserves, but uh, to develop our foreign economic relations with the countries of the Russian Far East, Japan, R Republic of Korea, the Chinese People's Republic and any other uh, countries. Russian President Vladimir Putin is expected to travel to the forum after his visit to China and to address its participants. The Kremlin says President Putin's speech will focus on investment opportunities in the Far East. Russia's currency, the ruble, has lost over 50 percent of its value against the dollar and the euro in just a year, following a drop in global oil prices and Western sanctions. Observers say that while Russia's Far Eastern region presents multiple opportunities, some questions about the security of investments still remain. They say that Russia's Far East desperately needs adequate infrastructure and that it lacks a legal framework to allow for secure investment. In the absence of such um, framework, uh, the, the only type of investment that might be attractive for the Chinese in the Far East would essentially uh, um, concern uh, natural resources like uh, exporting timber, uh, maybe some oil and gas, of course. Russia's Far East Development Ministry says it expects around 70 agreements to be signed during the forum, which ends on September 5th. These include deals on power, in agriculture and in oil and gas. Many of the agreements are to be signed between Russian companies and South Korea's Ministry of Industry, Trade and Energy, as well as the Export-Import Bank of Korea. Anya Daiva, CCTV, Moscow.